Imagine this. You're a researcher with an interest in and an aptitude for marine biology. Over the years, your work has taken you far and wide to the furthest corners of the Earth's oceans. You've observed countless species of sea life, from fish and crustaceans to whales and sharks, predators and prey alike. During one of your travels, you find yourself off the coast of South Africa, monitoring the local population of sea creatures. Looking out across the water, you see a large dark shape moving below the surface. There is a shadow streaking its way towards your vessel, dark as night, speeding like a torpedo. You rush across the deck, leaning over the port side as the shape swims beneath your boat. You're certain you know what it was. After all your years studying the world beneath the waves, you know a whale shark when you see one. The largest known species of fish still in existence, the whale shark is a filter feeder, consisting on a diet of plankton and other tiny aquatic organisms. A whale shark poses absolutely no threat to humans, or rather any whale shark other than this one would impose a threat. But how could you know that? Scanning the water, you strain your eyes, trying to spot what you assumed was an ordinary whale shark swimming below. But there is nothing, no sign of it anywhere. Sighing, you think you might have missed your chance to see one in the wild. Perhaps it changed direction, instead of swimming under the boat, you tell yourself. The ship turns and starts making its way back towards the small harbor, leaving you blissfully unaware that there's an extra passenger on board. As you disembark, you notice something on the side of the boat. Emblazoned on the hull is a motif of a familiar shape, a whale shark depicted entirely in painted dots. You stare at it for a moment, intrigued by the pattern. It reminds you of a piece you once saw, an aboriginal Australian style of dot art. You're a little taken aback by the coincidence, having briefly spotted a whale shark while out at sea earlier, blissfully unaware that this painting marks your first encounter with SCP-1449, known more colloquially as the Dreamtime Whale Shark. In fact, you're so amused by seeing the whale shark earlier, only to find one painted here on the boat that it distracts you. You don't realize that the whale shark painting hadn't been on the side of the boat when you'd shipped out. Instead, you pay the crew and thank the captain for letting you hire the vessel for your research and then head off. By the time you make it back to the nearby town and settle down in after a long day on the water, the dotted painting of the whale shark has already slipped from your mind. But as you begin drifting off and everything goes dark, you're about to find out that your encounter with the Dreamtime Whale Shark is only just beginning. You've never been a heavy sleeper and rarely remember your dreams. Any that you might have seem to pass out of your head the moment you wake up or are too faint for you to acknowledge while you're sleeping. But tonight is different. Tonight you're dreaming vividly. In this dream, water surrounds you like it has your whole career. But this time, you're underneath the surface, adrift in an empty ocean, nothing around you but endless blank sea. You feel something in your hand, something smooth and moving gently like organic matter, something alive. You find yourself gripping the tail of a whale shark, and somehow, as is often the way with dreams, you know that this is the same whale shark from earlier that day. The one that swam up to your boat and ended up sticking on the side of it as a dot art painting. SCP-1449 has this latent ability. While it normally appears as a flat two-dimensional piece of aboriginal Australian dot art, the Dreamtime Whale Shark can shift whenever it is underwater. It still appears as a collection of painted dots in this unmistakable shape of a whale shark, but in an aquatic environment, it becomes three-dimensional. And that's what you'd seen swimming towards the boat not just a whale shark, but SCP-1449. Within your dream, you release the Dreamtime whale shark's tail and begin to float upwards. Breaking the surface of the water, you breathe lungfuls of fresh air. The first thing you see is land, and it's close by, close enough for you to swim to shore. Paddling through the water, you reach an island, one in a chain of small land masses, tiny continents in a shallow, unfamiliar ocean. You look back to the water, but can find no sign of SCP-1449. The Dreamtime Whale Shark has brought you here and left you on this island, but you can only speculate as to why. 
There must be a reason, you insist to yourself. The dreamscape around you, it would seem, is either the creation of SCP-1449, or at the very least a side effect of falling asleep close by to where you saw the Dreamtime Whale Shark in its painted form. Whatever this place is, there must be some way to uncover an answer. It stands to reason, you think, that if you can understand what's going on, then perhaps therein lies the key to escaping this dream and waking up back in reality. The small island you find yourself on, and the others nearby, are inhabited by strange life forms. As you walk across the shore, sand clinging to your wet feet, you approach what you thought at a distance to be a group of other people. Instead, you see a group of peculiar beings. They are not quite human, but they are definitely close. The closer you walk, you notice these strange humanoid shapes huddle tighter together, their backs to you. When you try to call out to them, asking where you are or how you might return to reality, they bustle away. The wind carries the sound of their chatter towards you, and you're certain you hear them call you another one, just another traveler from afar. What you don't realize, lost in this dream environment, is that there are others like it. Pocket worlds like this one, similar but different, currently being experienced by any others asleep near SCP-1449. As you ponder what to do on the beach, the captain of the boat you hired is on a different version of the same island, watching a herd of multiple 2,000 kilo platypi being shepherded by six tattooed three meter tall humanoid figures. Meanwhile, his first mate is in another version of this dream world, learning how to hunt under the tutelage of a man called Gray the Rabbit Hunter. Each version of SCP-1449's dreamscape have separate continuities to each other. They are differing copies of the same chain of islands, with the same inhabitants, but each visited by a different traveler from afar in their sleep. Much like a lucid dream, visitors to the Dreamtime Whale Shark's worlds can interact with them, shaping and altering events in the continuity they find themselves in. Deciding to leave the beach, you elect to make your way towards higher ground to try to get a wider scope of your surroundings. Fortunately, there is a towering mountainous shape nearby, standing like dark serrated teeth against the clear horizon. You begin your dangerous trek, ascending your way up these dead, jagged hills. You're still unclear on how you got here or how to escape, but you will yourself to keep climbing, knowing there must be some way to wake up from this bizarre dream. Finally reaching level ground, you take a moment to catch your breath, collecting your thoughts before advancing any further. You turn, gazing out over the landscape spreading out below and all around you. The island is small enough you can see the shore where you arrived, and the ocean flanking this landmass on all sides. In this short moment, you appreciate the beauty of this bizarre dream world for the first time. The trees sway in the gentle breeze, moving like the calm rolling of waves in the water beyond, both glistening with the warm light of the sun. While it is still true that you have no idea how or why SCP-1449 brought you here, or how to leave, you think to yourself that at least this dream environment isn't a hostile one. Not that you'd want to be stranded there forever, but there are certainly far more unforgiving places one can dream about. A grim thought suddenly dawns on you. How long have you been here? Does time pass differently in this world to the one you're still asleep in? A sound shakes your thoughts back to your current here and now. It was a voice. You're sure of it. A voice calling out, but not to you. Traversing the dead, jagged hills, you see a figure. A person from the real world like you, not one of the local humanoids. They don't see you. They're calling out to someone in a ramshackle hut cobbled together from pieces of wood and other scraps. On the arm of the figure's dark, military-like uniform is a symbol, and you can just make out three distinct letters. S. C. P. A wooden plank that functioned as the door creaked open, revealing a second figure. The man looks disheveled, his worn clothing patched with scraps of leather and shark skin, making him look as cobbled together as his makeshift hut, like he was an extension of the small structure. You watch as the man talks to the agent, overhearing his words. Don't say anything. If you say anything, I lose my mind. You can say anything and something horrible happens, the strange man warns, talking too quickly for the Foundation agent to reply. You're a dreamer, like me. My name is Nikolai. I am the ship seer of the Dunham and the Brotherhood of Selechostik Pugniks Kombin. The man Nikolai, he called himself, seemed distressed, 
tripping over his words, disagreeing with himself until he starts trailing off into swearing obscenities. I'm not Nikolai, he shouts. I am Agent, Agent John, before stumbling and cursing again. I'm sorry, I can't, can't keep the memory straight. Being this lucid for this long hurts. The dreaming fills in all the gaps. Things have always been even as they are brought into being. I've been on this cliff since the beginning of time. Just like how this place has always been here. The dream was torn away by the deaths of gods before time began. But I watched it happen five years ago. Are you following? I can barely tell the dream and reality apart anymore. My world has always been the way it is and we made it like that. We hurt the dreaming. The shark, that's how we see it. We heard it, killed it in our world, and the dream time poured out like it spilled blood, and we made this big scar here, and, and things are wrong. Fish walk and ghosts haunt the stones, and women give birth to plastic children, and the leech fields stretch out forever in the seas of human blood, and the center eats cocaine and caviar out of panda skull bowls on the crushed backs of opal mares in acres of broken glass. And it has always been like this. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it again. You're already racing back down to the dead jagged hills. The sight of the deranged Nikolai burned into your mind. A man reduced to a babbling lunatic, cast away and left alone in this strange dreamscape that SCP-1449 brought you to. But Nikolai is more than that. More than just someone driven mad by his isolation. He is a grim prophecy of what will become of you. Unless you can find a way to leave the Dreamtime Whale Shark's world. Already back on the beach, you drop down, kneeling in the wet sand as the tide washes over your knees. The how or why of SCP-1449 bringing you into this dream isn't important. All that matters to you is avoiding ending up like Nikolai. Whatever it takes, you know one thing above all else. You need to wake up. But whether you actually ever will is another question entirely. Now check out SCP-343 God and SCP-5000Y, the full story compilation for more mind-bending tales from the SCP Foundation.